Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking about logarithmic differentiation and most importantly, when to use it. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have that this technique will be used using the laws of logarithms or for short, just logs, right? So remember when I told you guys that the rules of logarithms were actually going to be very helpful to you guys and make your life a lot easier when it came to deriving certain problems. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about logarithmic differentiation, right? And it is used to avoid lengthy product rules or quotient rules. Actually, it's going to be both. Whenever you see a product rule that you want to avoid or a quotient rule that you want to avoid, you're going to be able to use logarithmic differentiation, all right? And also, it is useful when deriving functions with products, quotients, and powers. And for an example, what that may look like, let's look right over here to the right, which is a perfect example of when the function tells us, please use logarithmic differentiation, don't make your life so hard, use the rules of logs, which I actually provided for you right up here. All right, so we look at the example in the box, we have y equal to 5x squared times the radical of cosine, all divided by x plus one to the third. So here we have products, because we have these two multiplying, we have quotients because this, we have something dividing on the top and the bottom. And then we also have powers. Look at this power here to the third. And the square root is actually also a power. So we have everything going on here to tell us, hey, this is a, an example of when to use logarithmic differentiation. So first we're going to start off with how to use it, right? How to use logarith logarithmic differentiation because here the y equal to this giant thing doesn't have a log. So how can, we, how can we use the rules of logs if we don't actually have a log in the problem? Let's go ahead and see example one so we can answer that question right away. So here we have y equal to x over cosine of x, right? So this is an obvious example of a quotient rule, right? We have a function divided by another function. And we want to avoid, we want to avoid doing this quotient rule, which this is kind of like a simple quotient rule, but still we want to avoid them at all costs. And I want to provide you guys another way of freedom from doing quotient rules or product rules. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply an ln to both sides. We're going to manipulate our function by applying an ln to both sides, right? So we're going to have ln of y equal to ln of x over cosine of x, right? So now that I have applied an ln to both sides, because I can do that, I can do the same thing to both sides because I'm not really creating any change. I'm being fair with the left and then with the right. And I'm going to have an ln in my in my problem. And as you guys can see, using this rule right here of whenever you have two factors dividing, this is going to turn into their individual logs, right? Where we're going to have ln of x minus ln of cosine of x equal to the ln of y, right? So therefore, we have the ln of x minus the ln of y because we have two factors right here dividing. So now how do we go from here to finding y prime? How do we go from here to finding the derivative, right? That is the question. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and derive both sides, right? We're going to go ahead and derive both sides. So using the rules of ln, right, using the rules of ln, if I ask you guys to derive if I ask you to derive ln of y, we're just going to treat it the same way, right? We're just going to look at the angle, and it's going to be it's going to be one over the angle times the derivative of the angle, right? It's going to be one over the angle times the derivative of the angle, and that's going to be one over y times y prime. And when we have been able to find what we're looking for, you guys see how we just found our y prime there. So let's go ahead and keep doing this. Keep doing the right side now. So what is the derivative of the ln of x? It is going to be 1 over the angle, right, which the angle is x, times the derivative of the angle, which is just 1. Eventually, you do the derivative of ln of x so many times, you just kind of memorize that the derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x, right? But this is why. We just follow our steps. And then we're going to have minus 1 over our angle, right? So our angle here is cosine. So 1 over our angle, cosine of x, times 
the derivative of cosine of x, the derivative of our angle. And now cosine starts with a c, so the derivative is going to be negative, and cosine is married to sine, so it's going to be negative sine of x. Now we're going to go ahead and clean this up, and we're going to have it in green. It's going to be 1 over x. This negative and this negative are going to cancel, giving us a positive, and this is going to become sine over cosine. And then we're going to have 1 over y times y prime. But we just want to solve for y prime by itself. We don't want the whole 1 over y in front of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply both sides by y so I can cancel this y on this side, right? So now I have y prime by itself, which is what I want, equal to 1 over x plus sine over, sine over cosine, right? But there's just one more thing that I can do to simplify this, and it's going to be starting off with having one over one over x plus first of all sine over cosine is another way of saying tangent, so I'm going to have tangent of x changing for the sine over cosine of x, and since I'm multiplying times y, I'm going to multiply by the y, which is just the original function, which is x over cosine of x. So here we have our whole derivative, which is 1 over x plus tangent of x times x over cosine of x. So that right there is our whole derivative, right? 1 over x plus tangent of x times x over cosine of x. So the last step here to do is just to multiply both sides by y so we can leave the y prime by itself, which is our goal here. We just got to find our y prime, and it's equal to what's inside of the blue box. So let's go ahead and see a different example, a different example. And the way we start our logarithmic differentiation is by applying our ln to both sides. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to have ln here of y. And then we're going to have ln of whatever's in here. Which what we're going to have is we're going to have x to the fifth power times square root square root of 1 plus x cubed. Okay? Now we can change this because we can see that there's two factors multiplying. Let's put the, the multiplication there between them. So we're going to break them up into two factors that are actually adding. So x to the fifth plus ln of radical 1 plus x cubed. Right? And then we're going to go ahead and keep simplifying this. Now that we've already used this rule right here, we've used rule number one, we're going to go ahead and use this rule, which means that we're going to bring down the exponents. But even before we use our rule of bringing down the exponents, we have to realize that we need to change our radical to an exponent, and that's going to be changing our radical to 1 plus x cubed, all raised to the 1 half, right? And this right here is going to be ln of x to the fifth. And I'm putting the exponents outside to make it a little more obvious that I need to bring them down, right? So I have my the, the radical turns into an, ex, to an exponent of 1 half, and the 5 just kind of comes out. So we're going to bring these exponents forward. This is all before we even derive. So we're going to have 5 ln of x plus 1 half ln of 1 plus x cubed. And now I feel that we're ready to derive. But our derivative is going to be very painless. It's not going to be really painful because you guys will see y in just a second. So we start off by deriving ln of y, which is always going to be the same thing, right? It's always going to be just, it's always going to be just 1 over y, 1 over the angle, times the derivative of the angle, and that is going to be y prime. Always going to be the same thing on the left side. No worries there. And now we're going to have 5 times the derivative of ln of x, which if you guys have memorized it by now, the derivative, the derivative of ln of x is just 1 over x times the derivative of the angle, which is 1. So that's not going to make a difference, right? So it's times 1, but that's not going to make a difference. So now we have plus 1 half times the derivative of ln of 1 plus x cubed which is 1 over the angle, which is 1 plus x cubed, 
times the derivative of the angle, which is derivative of 1 is just 0, plus the derivative of x cubed, which is just 3x squared. Okay? And now we're going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. This all is going to turn into 5 over x plus 3x squared on the top over 2 times 1 plus x cubed. And now we're going to have y prime and 1 over y. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of our y in the front by multiplying both sides by y. See how it cancels. Now we just have y prime. So y prime is equal to 5 over x plus 3x squared over 2 1 plus x cubed times y. And y in this case is going to be our y from here. So we're going to multiply it by x to the fifth times the square root of 1 plus x cubed. So I know that I recognize that the first part of this kind of was a little slow because we were really focused on using the rules of logarithms. But then once we went into taking the derivative, it was just a very simple logarithm, uh, logarithm that we had to derive. It wasn't some crazy complicated product rule or chain rule or power rule or all this stuff that we just want to avoid. We want to go ahead and do simple logarithm differentiations, which is exactly what we did. So now we've finally made it to like big day in which we have to do the derivative of the problem which we in the beginning it almost seemed like crazy to do but now that we're, we already know the, the rhythm on how to do logarithmic differentiation we're going to go ahead and tackle this big boy so let's go ahead and apply we always start off by applying ln to both sides so let's go ahead and do that we're going to apply ln to both sides so we're going to have 5 x squared cosine of x all over x plus 1 to the third power, right? So then we're going to go ahead and apply our logarithm rules, which we're going to say that we're going to say that we're going to have these two terms here multiplying and then just dividing by the bottom term. See, I do know that the 5x squared, they're also multiplying, so I could actually break it up into into three terms multiplying in the top. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have ln of 5 plus ln of x squared plus ln of radical cosine of x, okay, minus the ln of x plus 1, x plus 1 to the third. And if you guys remember from logarithms in our video of logarithms, everything that's on top the 5, the x squared, and the radical, they all get a positive. They're, they're all adding. And then whatever's on the bottom, which is just the x plus 1 to the third, is subtracting, or, it's, or it gets a negative in front. Right? So now that we've expanded it, we're going to go ahead and bring down our exponents. But before we go ahead and bring down our exponents, we're going to get rid of our radical here. And we're going to change our radical to... Let's leave everything in red. We're going to leave our radical, change our radical to one half, right? So we're going to change our radical to one half. So let's just keep writing everything here, and then get get to our radical cosine of x to the one half minus x plus one to the third. So if you guys remember, whenever we have a radical, we always just change it to the one half, and it's time to bring down all these exponents. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have ln of 5 plus 2 ln of x plus 1 half ln of cosine of x minus 3 ln of x plus 1. All right? And then we still have our ln of y down here. So now that we've used our logarithm rules, we're going to go ahead and find the derivative and we're just going to take the derivative of the left hand side which is the derivative of ln of y which is going to be 1 over the angle right times the derivative of y 
which is y prime. So that's always going to be the same thing on the left hand side. No worries there. And then we're going to start off with the derivative of ln of 5. That is going to be 0 because it's a constant. ln of 5 is a constant. Then this right here is going to be 2 times the derivative of ln of x. And if you guys have memorized it by now, it is 1 over x times 1, which is the root of the angle. But the derivative is just 2 times 1 over x. Now here, the derivative is going to be plus 1 half times 1 over the angle times the derivative of the angle. What is the derivative of cosine of x? See, cosine of x starts with a c, with a c, therefore it's a negative derivative. And then cosine is married to sine, so it is negative sine of x. Okay? And I know we're a little short on space, but we're going to try to make it fit in which we have we have now minus 3 times the derivative of ln of x plus 1, which is going to be 1 over x plus 1, right? Times the derivative of the angle. And here the angle is just, the derivative of the angle is just 1. So it's going to be times 1. So it's actually not going to make much of a difference, right? So we're going to play here with our thin space that we have. And we're going to just bring it back down here. 1 over y times y prime. The 0 is going to go away. Here the 2 and the 1 are going to multiply, giving us 2 over x. Okay. Here the 1 half is just going to stay on top. And we're actually going to combine this positive here with this neg negative, giving, a, giving us a negative in the front. The sine is going to take over the top. And the cosine is going to be on the bottom. So we're going to erase that, actually. And just have sine on the top over 2 times cosine with a minus in the front. And then this negative, this actually this negative, this 3 right here and this 1 and this 1 are going to multiply. Giving us a negative from here, a negative 3 over x plus 1. So we kind of shrunk that thing and we simplified it a little bit. And now we're going to do our step in which we multiply y times both y and we're actually going to do it in green so it stands out a little bit times y to both sides so that here it's going to cancel this y and it's going to leave us with y with y prime equal to 2 over x minus you guys see that here sine over cosine is actually sine over cosine is tangent so it's going to be tangent of x divided by 2 minus 3 over x plus 1 times y and y is just this massive problem here which is 5x squared radical of cosine of x over x plus 1 to the third right so now we have finished this crazy long problem we just got to give ourselves a pat on the back that thing was awesome it was amazing and we're all done with it so now we're going to do some more practice problems on how we can do the logarithmic differentiation when given different kind of powers or different combinations of product rules and chain rules and stuff, just crazy stuff that we just want to simplify and use logs to be like, hey, calm down, I got you, I'm going to use my log rules, all right? So let's go ahead and do some practice problems and I'll see you guys next time.